The Supreme Court will hear the 14th Amendment case to bar Donald Trump from the primary ballot. Oral arguments are set for Thursday with the justices weighing Colorado's decision to disqualify Trump from that state's Republican primary ballot for engaging in insurrection. Trump's attorneys have claimed the Supreme Court ruling to remove him from the ballot would, quote, unleash chaos and bedlam. More than a dozen other challenges to Trump's eligibility for office are now pending. Joining me now, former Deputy Assistant Attorney General Harry Lippman. He's a legal affairs columnist for the L.A. Times and host of the Talking Feds podcast. Harry, thank you very much for being here in the short time that we thank have. You. There are two key questions around the 14th Amendment. Does it apply to presidents? And what counts as insurrection? So help us understand how the Supreme Court could answer either of those questions. So look, the text fits. It, there's a lot of historical analysis, and they've had uh, been a whole a whole avalanche of his of briefs that really have driven home the officer argument doesn't really bear up very well. And insurrection, we saw it in front of our eyes. They have what they need to make the ruling, and there's nothing anti-democratic about saying insurrectionists need not apply, and it's in the Constitution. But it's a very vexing moment for the Supreme Court, because you have to think they're going to be loath to authorize a sort of quilt work, different pattern in different states, Trump off in, in Colorado, on in Wyoming, et cetera. They are in a tight spot. And the 14th Amendment also leaves open whether someone like Trump should be kicked off the ballot or prevented from holding office after he wins the votes. Which interpretation is more likely from the justices? Again, the ones that they may use for a sort of off-ramp that you can see why they want don't really hold up very well legally. But when it says he's prevented from holding office, it's, it follows, just as it would if he were 34, that he can be prevented from uh, standing for office as well. The, the plain text, many things point in favor of it, and yet so many people, I have to say I'm among them, see the Supreme Court as being reluctant to uh, pull the trigger on it. You know, Colorado is one of the 16 states and territories holding primaries a month from now on Super Tuesday, right. March 5th. Do you expect a Supreme Court decision about Trump's ballot access before then? It'll be fast. I don't think it'll go all the way to June. They said a very quick briefing schedule. So around then, Jonathan, I think they are conscious of the calendar and they're going to move in Supreme Court terms uh, pretty quickly. And speaking of the calendar, Trump's federal election interference trial is no longer on the calendar for March, pending a decision on his immunity claim. What could that mean for the overall timeline of this case? Well, of this case and all the federal cases, it does feel as if the time is slipping, slipping, slipping. This one, there's still, in the election interference, there's still a lot of time. But the big problem with the D.C. Circuit isn't just that about 26 days have elapsed. It's what they might say when they do come out, because their ruling might lead either to Supreme Court review, especially if the Republican on the panel goes a different way, or it may cause a remand that then Trump can try to bring up the system again. So we're mm -hmm. not at midnight yet, but we are approaching it, and it's and it's very important what the actual reasoning of the D.C. Mm -hmm. Circuit is. We have to hold and, our breath and wait. Right. And last question, um, Harry. Fulton County, Georgia DA Fonnie Willis admitted she had a, quote, personal relationship with a special prosecutor. Um, how much does public perception around this matter um, uh, around this matter for her Trump case? That's exactly the question, because there's no legal basis for a conflict now. But there are, you know, there, we have the drumbeat from a Georgia special investigation. Jim Jordan has subpoenaed her. They will try to keep this alive, but there is zero, I mean zero, legal basis now for actually saying there's a conflict. Wasn't the smartest move, but it has nothing to do with whether she can adequately prosecute the case now.